Hello, welcome to the second lesson in the cargo lesson series. In this lesson, I will introduce the International Maritime Dangerous Goods, or IMDG code, its application from the point of view of passing your orals examination at master's and chief mate level. Compliance with the IMDG code is required under the conventions of both SOLAS and MARPOL. Under SOLAS, the carriage of dangerous goods is prohibited except in accordance with the relevant provisions of Chapter 7. This is emphasised by the International Maritime Dangerous Goods IMDG code. The carriage of dangerous goods in package form shall comply with the relevant provisions of the IMDG code, which is considered an extension to the provisions of SOLAS Chapter 7. Under MARPOL, the carriage of dangerous goods is prohibited except in accordance with the relevant provisions of the MARPOL Convention. The IMDG code was developed as an international code for the maritime transport of dangerous goods in packaged form in order to enhance and harmonise the safe carriage of dangerous goods and prevent pollution to the environment. The code sets out in detail the requirements applicable to each individual substance, material or article, covering matters such as packaging, container traffic and stowage, with particular reference to the segregation of incompatible substances. IMDG code contains advice on terminology, packaging, labelling, placarding, marking, stowage, segregation, handling and emergency response. Of particular interest to mariners is the dangerous goods list where you'll find the following information. A. The UN number, which is assigned to a dangerous good by the United Nations Subcommittee of Experts on the Transport of Dangerous Goods, in the UN list. B. Proper shipping names in uppercase characters, which may have to be followed by additional descriptive text in lowercase characters. C. Class and division of the goods. As a quick refresher, class 1 are explosives, class 2 gases, class 3 flammable liquids, class 4 flammable solids, class 5 oxidising substances, class 6 toxic and infectious substances, class 7 radioactive materials, class 8 corrosives and class 9 for miscellaneous dangerous substances. D. Any subsidiary risk associated with the class of goods or whether the goods are marine pollutants. E. Packing groups assigned by the substances and any special provisions required. F. Limited qualities that provide maximum quantity per inner packaging or article for transporting dangerous goods as limited quantities. G. Accepted quantities provided through an alphanumeric code which indicates the maximum quantity per inner and outer packaging for transporting dangerous goods as expected quantities. H. Packing instructions include marking, labelling and placarding instructions. Special packaging provisions, for example, special provisions applicable to fumigated cargo transport units. I. Tank and bulk container instructions provide design, constructions, testings and approval of bulk containers and road tank vehicles. J. EMS. This column refers to the relevant emergency schedules for fire and spillage. In the EMS guide, emergency response procedures for ships carrying dangerous goods. K. Stowage instructions are provided through stowage. 29 stowage codes and 4 handling codes provide good handling instructions. L. Segregation of goods according to the class and division. Each material is assigned a segregation code from SG1 to SG75. Each code has its own stowage instructions. M. Properties and observations, such as for UN number 1035, 
It states that the item is a flammable gas, explosive limits 3% to 16%, slightly heavier than air. The IMDG code is divided into seven parts. Each part contains further chapters. Part 1 contains general provisions, definitions and training. Part 2 contains classification of dangerous goods. Part 3 contains dangerous goods list, special provisions and exceptions. Part 4 contains packaging and tank provisions. Part 5 contains consignment procedures. Part 6 contains construction and testing of packagings, intermediate bulk containers, IBC, large packagings, portable tanks, multiple element gas containers, MEGCs, and road tank vehicles. Part 7 contains provisions concerning transport operations. Appendix A contains list of generic and NOS proper shipping names, Part B contains glossary of terms. For detailed content in each part, please use the next interactive slide. Occasionally, MCA examiners are known to have asked candidates to demonstrate the use of IMDG code. Most questions appear related to the application of the dangerous goods list from Annex 2 of IMDG. I would strongly suggest that you refresh your knowledge on the IMDG application and try to work out a few examples. To make things easy for you, I'm going to use a random example of hafnium powder here. You may possibly be given a UN number and asked to find out information available in the IMDG code for 2545. Begin by going to the annexes of IMDG where you will find a centre spread list containing information as presented here. Dangerous Goods has 18 columns. Column 1 and 18 indicate UN number, in our case it reads 2545. Column 2 provides the proper shipping name for the goods, in our case it reads Hafnium Powder Dry. Column 3 provides class or division for Hafnium Powder and in our case it reads class 4.2. To find out more, chapter indicator is 2.0, where you can find further about this class. In our case, class 4.2 reads flammable solids, substances liable to spontaneous combustion. Column 4 lists any subsidiaries lists, in our case the table says none. Column 5 provides the packing group. It reads Roman numeral 3, in our case and for details for this you can go to chapter 2.0.1.3 for details. From where you can find out that in our case goods is a marine pollutant and is under packaging group 3, which is substances presenting low danger. Column 6 provides any special provisions under part 3 annex 2 special provisions and exemptions, which are contained in a list against numerical numbers. For our list we see the need to locate 223 and read the special provisions for our goods. Columns 7a and 7b provide limited quantities and exceptions qualities under chapter 3.4 and 3.5 of the IMDG code. In our case from chapter 3.5 we can locate code E1 from the table and obtain maximum net quantity per inner and outer packaging. Columns 8 and 9 provide packing instructions and provisions. Columns 10 and 11 provide IBC instructions and provisions. Columns 12, 13 and 14 provide portable tanks and bulk container instructions and provisions. Column 15 provides emergency medical schedule. 
columns 16 and 16b, provide storage handling and segregation instructions. Column 17 provides properties and observations. On that note, for your own benefit, can I ask that you borrow a copy of the IMDG code and try to find the rest of the information for hafnium powder under columns 8 to 17. What you need to do is to find the code and chapter. For example, for column 8, package instruction is P002 and LP02. You can find this information in chapter 4.1.4. Using the IMDG code is relatively easy as long as you know how to quickly look for the codes and how to use the various tables from the code. There's only one way to find out, and this is by giving it a try for yourself. That brings me to the close of this lesson on IMDG code. I'll see you next time in the next cargo lesson.